we are live. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. What's yeah. up? That's going to get everybody really amped up to kick in and inspire. To listen and watch this excellent podcast. Um, all right. Hi, everybody. It's the week of April uh, what is 1st. News? Well, <laughs> yeah. It's it. Today's uh, April, April uh, 2nd. Today's April 2nd. Um, yeah. uh, so it's, oh, look uh, at the mug. Look at the mug. Yeah, look at the mug. For those that are watching this, Jordan's drinking his periphery mug. Jeff is drinking his China mug. And Justin is drinking his what? His nicely designed mug. Um, Thank you. So we have, a, we have Jeff Holcomb joining us today. Hey, Jeff. Hey, what's, what's up, guys? Up, guys? Thanks, Thanks for having me. me. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get <laughs> Wait, he's an alumni. alumni. He is an alumni. I uh for two other episodes. Wait, th- two or three? Two. 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 Yeah. We did, I did one on my own and, and then, then one, one with, with Billy O. Yep. And yeah, this is the third one. Sick. Um Yeah, I tried to get Joe to join too, but he was busy. So he couldn't he couldn't hop on this week. But he'll he'll jump on next week, most likely. But uh yeah, so I, I figured it would be good to just kind of recap kind of how everybody's doing uh, now that we're another week into this whole ordeal. Um, and I'd love to get, Jeff, I'd love to get kind of your perspective on things and kind of see how you're doing and maybe even like kind of run down um, just how your schedule has changed and like what you're doing day to day and if it's consistent, if it's changing. Um, and how you've adapted to this whole thing. We kind of talked, we all, the three of us talked about that last week, but it'd be cool to hear kind of what you're doing every day. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Totally. Totally, Yeah. yeah. Um, I I mean, mean, yeah, yeah, like like, this this whole thing, thing, like I'm I'm sure sure a lot lot of people people out there, um, we we all kind of went through the the phases of it, you know, when it first hit and then they they started started closing closing things down um, for, for me, it was, was just like a big, you know, what, what the hell is going to happen? You know, should, should I be scared? Should I be, you know, stockpiling? Um, you know, is the whole world going to hell, you know? Um, and that lasted the first few days. And then, but now that we're kind of into it, now that it's settling and we're kind of getting more information about it, um, I feel like, you know, you know, we're all, all kind, kind of getting, getting in, in our, our own little routines, routines now. now. You know, we're all at home. We're all kind of looking out for not only each other and our friends and family, but also ourselves. You know, I think looking out for yourself in a time like this is super important. Um, things that I've done to keep my mental health in check during all this is getting on a proper schedule, you know. Um I think, I think if you, if you don't, don't get your mental, mental health in check during times, times like this, it, it's, it's going to be like a snowball effect, and it'll, it'll just, you know. And especially if you, like, look, look at the news and look at Facebook and social media, media you know, it's, it's really, really hard to uh, not be worried or scared, you know, know reading a lot of the headlines out there. there. Uh, so, so also limiting my time on social media and the news has been really important. Um, and... Yeah, yeah, so, so now, now, like, especially these past week, this past week, week or two, I've been, been on a really, really good uh, routine, you know, exercising, exercising every day, meditating, um, making sure I look at reliable, um, you know, statistics and news, not just, like, the stuff people post, not just the headlines, you know, read the articles, you know, you'll see that the articles aren't as scary as the headlines make it out to be. Um, so So, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. now. Um, and I'm I'm actually actually very, I'm I'm doing very well. well. I'm I'm like really positive about about all the things things that are happening. happening. You know, great. Good, man. Yeah. Um, Justin, one sec, Jeff, I, uh, I've, I texted with you briefly, you know, just kind of checking in and, um, we obviously were talking about the Wim Hof stuff, which we should definitely address at some point today. But, um, yeah, like, have you had any, and or do you have any, like, 
bad moments still or bad days where like something freaks you out or like you know a headline or whatever it may be kind of throws you slightly off course and if so like how do you get yourself back on track right yeah i mean yeah for sure like you know as positive of an outlook as we can possibly have during a time like this there's always you know curveballs that get thrown into the mix you know like you read a headline you start seeing how bad it's getting in places like new york city and um you know, you start seeing these one-off events where young people, children even, are dying from this. Uh, so it's definitely worrisome. Uh, and um, yeah, it's not like it's not like this thing is not to be feared. Like, oh, it's all just a big thing of the media trying to scare us. Uh, I don't believe that you know they're making a big deal out of nothing. This is definitely something that is worrisome you know like most people haven't gone through anything like this um but at the same time like despite all that um we need to be informed about this you know we need to take care of you know making sure that we're all informed we have the right info you know and we have that we know what to do we know what the experts are telling us you know, stay, stay calm, calm, you know, work, work on yourselves at home, uh, do, do what, what you can, can to reduce the spread. spread. Um, and, you know, when, when I start thinking about things like that, like things that I have control of rather than things I don't have control of, uh, you just start, just work on that, you know, like, yeah, yeah there's a lot of things going on out there in the world that is worrisome, but... You know, we don't have control over that. All we can do is the things that we can do. Uh, and that, that always helps me. That always helps me out. Cool. Yeah. Justin, what were you going to say? Yeah, I just wanted to um, ask you, where are you currently? Because I know that you do a lot of traveling. I know you've lived a lot of places in the world. Um, where are you currently living? Just so uh, we get a little bit of like a glimpse maybe of, of, you know, of your, where we are, you know, or close. And, uh, and who are you hunkering down with? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, actually, actually not, not too far, far from, from you guys, guys, I don't think. I'm, I'm in Frederick, Maryland, Maryland. Uh, <laughs> and I'm living right now with my wife and two of my roommates, Justin Gosnell and Brian. Um, and how's everyone holding up, and, and, and are you finding uh, you know, comfort in like kind of the strength and safety in numbers? And um, I think, if I, if I remember correctly, your wife is a yoga practitioner and teacher, is that right? Yeah. And she's taking sure everyone, everyone through some, uh, so a little bit of a class here and there, kind of keeping a good schedule. For sure, yeah. We uh, we actually all keep each other's spirits uplifted, you know. Um, and I think that's important, you know. Uh, sometimes if someone starts worrying about something, you know, the others will kind of be like, nah, man, don't worry about that. Like, we don't know if that's true or not. We just got to wait it out and see, you know. So... We, we all, all do, do our, our own part, part to keep, keep each other uplifted. uplifted. Yeah, you yeah, got, you got good people with you. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you got really good really good people with you. I, I've been seeing mm -hmm. Justin's updates online. I know that he's, you know, Justin, so the guy we're talking about, Justin Gosnell, is a really good friend of, of mine too, and he works in the service industry. And he's like at work for sure, like seems like he is out and about. Um, doing what he needs to do to survive. Is that, I mean, has he been home at all, Jeff? Or is he pretty much out all day? Yeah. I mean, Justin's been killing it throughout all this. You know, he, he is out working. Um, but not only that, he's done a lot of things for the community. Yeah. Um, he's uh, started like fundraisers to help people that are unemployed. Um, you know, so he's kind of looking at this whole situation like, you know, you know, instead, instead of, of wallowing in our misery, what, what can we, we do, do to help? You know. Yeah. And, and so, so I think, think that's, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, Justin, and I've been we we texted here and there, and it's it. I don't know. I'm just so not surprised to see him so engaged in the community and with what he's doing. Um, we'll see if uh, I'll, uh, Jeff. I might hit him up and like get some links and stuff for anything that he's doing. We can put it in the show notes so that people can check out what he's up to and maybe if they want to donate or whatever they can do. Um, 
That'd be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to him and see. Jordan, sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, yeah I, was I was curious because you mentioned, mentioned meditation, meditation and, you know, meditation can mean uh, all kinds of different things to different people. people. And, and it's, it's something, something that I have studied and, and practiced for a long time now and have incorporated in a lot of the, uh, the rhythm work that I do. And what I'm interested and really curious about from a cultural perspective is uh, how meditation uh, really uh, enters the collective consciousness. I know it's one of those things that has been like bubbling up beneath the surface. Uh, and I feel like like yoga is is mainstream culture at this point. Uh, you know, mindfulness meditation is is maybe 10 to 20 years behind that in the, the way it's been introduced into this culture. And, and I think something like this, uh, this pandemic is what's going to get people who have been thinking about it or curious about it to really try it for the first time and to really maybe explore it in a more habitual way instead of a random class that you might take uh, every so often. So I'm just curious for you, uh, what is your practice? Uh, how does it, how has it developed maybe uh, or, or evolved? And is it something that you stick to uh, same, same practice, practice every day, day or is it, is it more flexible? flexible? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a, a great, great question, question, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Like for, for me personally, uh, I started really, you know, I've meditated, meditated off and on for like maybe 10 years, years or something, something. But, but especially, especially now, uh, the, the main reason I got back into it, cause I'm sure like a lot of people, my anxiety, it's just kind of been at like a, like a, just a little, like an underlying constant buzz, you know, throughout all this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we can all relate, you know, just kind of not knowing what the future holds and things like that. Um, so it's, it is important, um, for us to get that in check. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of other people getting into meditation. I've seen, seen a lot of my, my friends, friends on Facebook post about meditation and how it's been helping them. Um, and I think that's great. You know, my personal schedule with it, so I do, first thing I do when I wake up, I do a few rounds of the Wim Hof uh, breathing exercises, followed by meditation, and then the cold shower. You know, that's kind of my thing. And then I'll come out and do a real like maybe a 10 to 20 minute long meditation. I'll either do it on my own or I'll uh, listen to an app. Uh, I've used Headspace in the past. Right now I'm currently listening to Sam Harris's app. Uh, he's really good. Um, and just something to melt away the anxiety, you know, because it doesn't have to be there. It's not really serving us, you know. It's uh, what's happening is that that anxiety is triggering our fight or flight response. You know, we feel like our lives are being threatened in some way. So we that's what we're feeling. Um, but it's not helpful in this time. You know, it is a helpful response in certain situations, but not right now. You know, right now we have to stay calm stay collected and do what's smart i just had that conversation jeff with des last night um and i, I was going to talk to you guys about this as well like i for whatever reason and i really don't know why and maybe it was a headline that i read i just i had a rough day yesterday um i went through everything i've been doing stayed on my schedule but that underlying current of anxiety was way more palpable for whatever reason, and it was really hard to explain. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I tried to sort of pinpoint why and and you know where it came from, but ultimately it didn't matter. The thing that I was talking to Des about was one, the idea of the fight or flight mechanism that we we all have, and how that does create that that current, um, and then also how like our minds are are active based on that as well and we really can't control some of the thoughts that are happening that are just sort of spinning out in our heads and then what we were talking about was that the only thing that we really can do with that is to try to be an observer as while they're happening realize what it is realize you know whether it's productive or not productive um and then 
try to actively from the observer standpoint shift our mind's focus onto something that is real and and present um right you know and so i did that a a bunch of times throughout the day yesterday um i i did a bunch of variations of that but i found that uh the thing that helped the most was actually like something that uh eckhart tolle has talked about before which is like identifying your body parts like feeling Mm. your your feet your hands your arms um your your heart you know realizing that like you have pieces of you that are here that aren't you know aren't in your mind you know like you're here right now don't be there um and it definitely helped and i actually found so Talking about you know you doing the, the Wim Hof stuff, I've been doing that as well. I've also been doing at night in particular um, this other thing called soma breathing. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it it's um, it's basically you you breathe in through your nose for maybe you know two to three seconds, and then you slowly breathe out through your mouth, almost like you were blowing through a straw, like your lips are kind of pursed very slowly and a lot longer than the inhale. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's a form of like stress relief breathing. Uh, It's a way to breathe and lower blood pressure, so on and so forth. So I've been doing that pretty much like every night before bed. And that's been helping because it's another sort of thing to focus on that keeps you very present in the moment. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I just... uh, in response to what you were saying, I've just been having a lot of like very little things sort of set me off. Like even right before this, this, uh, Skype call. So Natalie's parents have been living at their beach house for the past like two and a half weeks. They haven't come home yet. Um, long story short, they're, they're coming home now. Like they should be home tonight. They've been really careful. They haven't been out. They've been social distancing. So I'm not worried about that. Um, But it's funny. uh, I don't know if they'll hear this or not, but they sent a picture. um, They went through a Dunkin' Donuts drive-thru and they were like, look how careful we're being wearing gloves. You know, they were wearing gloves. And I wanted to literally, I didn't do this, but I wanted to respond and be like, yeah, great. How about the lids? (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe you should have said that. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I mean, it was definitely too late. But at, at the same time, you know, when I start thinking about something like that, my mind has a tendency to really go off the deep end. Like, okay, that lid, those two lids in particular got infected and then they put it in their mouths and now they're infected and they're going to come home and this harmonious thing that me and Natalie have had here for three weeks is now going to get fucking interrupted and screwed up with turmoil because they're going to get us sick and it like that's where my mind goes right and then i'm like in my mind i'm like face down in a in a fucking bed with a with a ventilator um Mm -hmm. and i'm not making light of that in any way in fact it's like it's one of my biggest fears in in this moment is to to not do well if if any of you guys or me or my family contracts this thing that's a terrible terrible situation to be in and i feel for everybody who is who is going through that but I have to like go through this, like I I come to a crossroads where it's like, okay, which direction do I go in terms of my thinking right now? Do I try to think rationally about the situation that freaked me out? Meaning, oh, well, obviously Dunkin' Donuts has their shit together. You know, they're being careful. The people that are working there are being careful, but you don't know that, right? And like, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You can hope that that's the case, but at the end of the day, you really don't know that. So that's not really productive at the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's like false, um, it, 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 it's false security versus thinking, okay, these thoughts again are unproductive. They're not going to change the fact that like, it's already done. Um, mm-hmm. it's unlikely that anything will transpire from it, but I need to put my mind in a place that doesn't send me down the rabbit hole. So I was really happy that we were getting on this call because that is a great distraction to keep me very present. But even after this call, like my focus needs to to remain on things that I can control. You know, I don't yeah. know if you guys can relate to that. Jordan, go ahead. 
Well, well I want to respond to a couple of things, things, but you teed me up with a really good example. example. So, uh, with the idea of drinking from a lid, um, look, that is going to set off your stress response or the fight or flight response. And you're going to feel a flood of emotion and have a flood of thoughts that are literally there to help you, to help you survive. And so that's a good thing. I think for us to feel some fear, for us to feel some worry, uh, for us to feel uh, some sense of being uncomfortable, that's healthy because this is uh, a serious um, thing that's going on and we need to respond accordingly. Um, but what happens is then uh, our body, its wisdom, gives us the information. Then what do we do with that? How do we respond to it? And what you're talking about is that your mind goes from uh, the sit to being on a ventilator. Is that productive? Is that still helpful? I argue for you to go down that thought rabbit hole. At that point, it's not productive anymore. And what happens is that you keep getting that constant drip of, of stress uh, you know, through you know, your, your body, you know, through the uh, hormones and, and, and neurotransmitters and otherwise. And a lot of us just, this culture in general, is always on this constant drip. If you're a deer and you see a lion, then your fight or flight response is going to kick into high gear. And most likely, if the deer is able to, you're going to run away. Once the deer is safe, it's still not thinking about the lion. And then there's homeostasis. The relaxation response uh, turns on, and, and you're kind of back to central. Uh, most of us live in a state of fear. Uh, the media is constructed, and advertising is constructed, so we exist in that state and end up spending money to, uh, to, and to buy products and services to help, quote, fix ourselves. Um, you were talking also about this idea of being the observer, right? That's what, you know, to meditate is or a mindfulness practice. It, it's to be a bit more objective, to step back and to be the witness of our, our experience. And you're, you're doing a good job of that, Matt, in the sense of you're feeling this anxiety. You're even witnessing how your mind works. And that's really productive. Again, it's what do you do with it? I really like that you offered the example of connecting with your body, connecting with your physical state as a way to interrupt just the cognitive rabbit hole that, that you've gone down. Um, look, if I smoke weed and I get kind of anxious, the first thing I do is I start rubbing my hands together or rub my hands on, uh, on my thighs or I stand up and run in place because I'm re-entering my body. My, my attention, my consciousness is bringing the physical self more to the focus instead of just being in my head. And, you know, it's like you get on YouTube and 45 minutes later, you're watching some weird, like, kinky thing and you don't know why the fuck you got there in the first place, right? And, and, and not that I do that because I would never do that. But uh, the point is when we end up, thanks for the emoji. I got you. The idea is that oftentimes when we get on social media, 45 minutes later, we end up somewhere that we didn't intend to be because our behaviors aren't conscious at that point. Okay, we're just, and, and the, the algorithm and the technology is set up to prey upon these tendencies within us. So we spend more attention uh, on these you know, services uh, to, to give them more profit in, in advertising revenue. Um, so again, as Jeff said earlier, uh, control what we can control. What we can control is our attention. It's hard. You know, sometimes it's like chasing your own tail. That's the point of meditation. That's the point of a mindfulness practice. It's so that we end up taking the control back. Oftentimes, our unconscious is driving the car. The car is us. And that's very helpful because we can't process all of the micro decisions from day to day. We're not uh, equipped to do that. But this is why routine and habit is so important because we can start, uh, when we build or strengthen positive routines or habits, we can do things that serve us without uh, spending so much mental energy thinking about it or choosing it or, uh, uh, or doing something new. You know, if you're gonna do something for the first time, uh, that's gonna take more energy. If you wake up and you just start a breathing exercise because you've been doing that for two years, it's habitual at that point. 
Um, so, so I, I think that the, the takeaway, or one of the takeaways for those listening is, is just uh, becoming the driver of your own car. And what I mean by that is becoming more intentional about uh, how we respond to what's going on. And, uh, and you know, that's why I'm going to keep just, you know, fucking hammering this, this meditation thing. Because, uh, and it you know, excites me when, when someone like Jeff introduces that as something he's already doing. Because that is how we, we take more control uh, and can start responding to what's happening to us in the world instead of just unconsciously reacting to it. Yeah. <clears throat> Nice. I, I want to make a couple points and go backwards. That's a couple of notes, just so I wouldn't forget stuff. Um, routine and habit. Uh, right before I got out of the car, I was listening to Howard Stern, and it must have been a replay. I know Jordan's been listening often as well. But uh, was that hey now? Hey now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of the one of the biggest takeaways, uh, the, and I almost say in the car to listen to this, but um, this routine and habit. This just keeps coming back, right? We keep we've talked about this the last couple of weeks of having a routine, having a habit. If you're going to be stuck at home, uh, and and Howard referenced uh, prisoners of war, and those who did the best had the best outcomes with such uncertainty and such high anxiety, uh, much more than maybe what a lot of us are currently experiencing, right? Um, that you had to have a routine. And every day you have to get up with a purpose and you have to know what you're doing and when you're doing it, how you're going to do it, the duration of time. And of course, there's always the, the moment where, oh, it's not going the way that I was expecting it. That's OK. Uh, I remove myself from the situation and I make a pivot. And that's OK. And that can be maybe subconscious or that can be conscious. Right. You could be the driver or, or you could just let it autopilot for a second and pivot. And sometimes that's necessary. Um, and I know this is something that we've all talked about, and I'm going to circle back to Jeff and ask you a few questions about uh, your breathing exercises in your cold shower. But uh, I wanted to tell Matt that uh, two weeks ago, I did go through the drive through at uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and I picked up a coffee for someone. And I guess maybe it wasn't as heightened two weeks ago uh, as, as maybe the anxiety and stress and the fear and everything else that people are experiencing and feeling now that uh, more measures have been taken, you know, for this lockdown of, of staying in place, you know, uh, more and more people now can't be going out, et cetera. Um, but, and I think Jordan made this point as well, you know, we can only control ourselves. And I know this is going to be tough because most people probably aren't experiencing those who have left and now are coming back into the same place where you are. Uh, and, and, you know, you can take safety precautions as they come in, you know, make sure they're, you know, I mean, wash their clothes, you know, just think of all like the normal things you would do, just like your groceries coming in and try your best to control it. But at some point you just, you know, you just let it go and, and it will, and hopefully it will be fine. Right. Yeah. You try to just, you know, find some comfort in that uh, and it'll be okay. But yeah, please. Uh, I was just going <clears> to, <throat> are you done? Uh, I don't want to interrupt what you were saying. I just no, 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 go for it. And then I'll circle back after. I just wanted to, um, in, in helping people build a routine, we, last week we did talk about Wim Hof and the Wim Hof Method. Uh, and I, I did, I thought the free download was going to be a little bit more extensive, and I thought we could share that with everyone in this past week, but we haven't yet. So I was actually going to call on you and then Matt to back you up, uh, and you can talk about this while you're making the other point. Um, yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of breathing protocol you go through in the morning? Because we can just have our own protocol that we do with the chocolate croissants that maybe you can spearhead a bit from all of the uh, knowledge and experience you have. And then taking us through, because I was looking everywhere to try to find um, the, the starting point for the cold shower, whether it's 30 seconds or it's 15 seconds. And then what's, how many days do we do this before we move on? People put out 30 day challenges because people love those 30 day challenges. You know, so if, if you can give us some insight into uh, stuff that you've tried uh, and then your um, reaction and response to it. And, and now maybe in reflection, thinking what you maybe would have done differently to get a different result. And it's something that we can do that's, that would be actionable to, to help people in the Facebook group uh, to have their own routine with some of these same protocols. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, you know, first of all, you know, I do the Wim Hof method, but there are just endless, you know, breathing exercises out there. You know, Wim Hof didn't even invent this breathing exercise. You know, he just kind of, 
used it and made him super human and powerful, and he just wants to share with the world. Um, it probably takes thousands of years, like a lot of them. But um, yeah, if you're not familiar with it, it's just basically uh, you know you do you know you do thirty to forty breaths where you inhale deep and just let it go. So you want more force to be on the inhale, and then you just kind of let it all go. You know, it's like forceful inhale and just relax. You do that about 30 to 40 times. You should start feeling maybe some buzzing. I feel like itchy kind of sometimes. It's, it's basically, I think it's something like your, uh, your nervous system, autonomic nervous system getting like, Trigger or something. It's something deep inside. It feels really powerful. Yeah. Uh, and then it's exactly after that. 30, it's exactly what you. It's the autonomic nervous system getting woken up, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically getting like overloaded. It's like a, it's like a charge. You're, you're charging your body with oxygen. You're you know you're fueling, really fueling the parts of your body that don't get much much oxygen. You're really driving oxygen into every little nook and cranny of, of your body and, and your blood. Right, yeah. 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 And then, and yeah, after, after that, that uh, once you've done the 30 to 40 breaths, breaths you, do you do an exhale, exhale and then you just, and that's, that's my favorite, favorite part, where you do the exhale and then you just lay back, back meditate, and hold, and hold your breath, breath and just zone out. out. Uh, and, and it's, it's man, it's such, such a good, good feeling. feeling. Especially, Especially when, when you start, start reaching the end, end and you like start feeling like you need to breathe, but you just keep pushing and pushing. Yeah. Um, and then you just take a big inhale, and it feels so good, like it's euphoria. Yeah. Um, and at that point, that's when I feel all my anxiety just melt away. It's just like 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 a hot knife through butter. It's just like instantly, instantly goes, goes away, away. Uh, uh, and, and then you know, know if, if you're, you're just starting out you know you, you can, can even just do that just that, that one round but you know Wim Hof suggests you do three, three maybe four, four rounds, rounds or, or more, more if you want you, want, you know there's, there's no, no limit, limit. Um, and um, then after, after those, those three to four rounds, rounds you, you can, can do uh, where you do that same breath cycle but then you do like a bunch of push-ups afterwards during your breath hold uh it's just another way to kind of stimulate the nervous system and you'd actually be really surprised at least for myself matt i don't know about you but i can do way more push-ups holding my breath after this than normal you know i've written them both down and it's, it's something like double you know yeah. it's kind of it's kind of amazing like yeah. four and eight <laughs> More like one and two. Well, so <laughs> oh, it's sorry. it's really interesting, Jeff, because um, I've also, you know, as we talked about, I've been doing this now every day for the past bunch of weeks, gradually getting more involved, doing more rounds, um, doing the push-ups, doing the other exercises that come with it. Um, and I agree with you that the the best part of every round is – Getting into the, it's called hypoxia. So when you actually um, have a lack, so you, you oxygenate your your blood, you oxygenate your body with the breathing, and then when you breathe out and you hold your breath, the whole point is to sort of get into this um, hypoxic state where you have less oxygen in your blood, um, and you you can sort of like, I don't know the exact science, so I don't want to say something stupid, but um, it's very good for you to to practice that for a bit of time and then when you do inhale it's i mean it's like the best high i've ever had and i'm yeah having it every day multiple times a day just by yeah. sitting there and breathing it's i mean it's unreal and i don't i don't I was curious i wanted to ask you so like in my first round i start I definitely start tingling like my head my hands my legs my feet um, but by my second round, my body is not only tingling, it, it's, it's akin to the feeling of like a limb falling asleep, like your leg falls asleep or like pins and needles, but it's not that it, it's, it's similar to that. Uh, it's a much better feeling than that. But like 
one of the things that happens to me consistently is that my hands will tense up like this. And I, it's, it's out of my control. Have you noticed that at all when you're in the heavy breathing, like second, third, fourth rounds? Totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I do, do like tense up a little bit. bit you know, I'll kind of just like my whole body almost. I find myself doing things like this, you know, while I'm breathing. It's really weird. I kind of go in like autopilot, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah it, but it's, again, it like, that's how I know it's working. Because I feel these absolutely incredible feelings within the body. It's a little bit overwhelming, especially if you've never done it before. Um, it can be scary. Your heart will, will speed up throughout it because you're, you're really charging yourself. Um, you will tense up in certain ways. You'll feel rushes of, of blood. It's almost like being flushed, you know. Um, but again, quoting... Wim Hof himself, what you're doing is you're you're making your blood alkaline. You're getting rid of all the acidity in your blood by flushing it with oxygen, which basically brings it back to Jordan that that word homeostasis, right? To the to the point where we should be. Um, and not to go too far into this, but it was really interesting when you linked me to that Russell Brand episode with Wim Hof yesterday, Jordan, because I listened to it. And it is empowering. Um, I, Jeff, I don't know if you if I can link you to or Jordan can link you. Um, but it was an episode where Russell Brand interviewed Wim Hof. And Wim talks about the study that he was a part of where he was injected with E. coli. And in the hospital, they, they studied him. And it's all written down and there's videos about it. You can watch it if you're listening. But he was able to uh, fight off inflammation that is that would be caused by his immune system with the introduction of an of a bacteria in his system and through his breathing and meditation methods that we're talking about now he was actually able to ward off the inflammation ward off the fever and the the other symptoms that come with that kind of inflammation and what was so interesting about what he was saying was that the um, lycoproteins that get uh, that that started you know attacking you um, with that injection that he went through are the exact same lycoproteins that are becoming, that are creating inflammation with this coronavirus and COVID-19. And one of the things that he was saying was that um, he would love it if scientists would actually inject his, the, the blood samples that they have from that uh, study with COVID-19 to see what would happen and if that was successful, he literally said like that he would be more than willing to be injected with uh, this coronavirus to prove again that through this he could even fight that off. Um, wow. And that was really empowering to think about. Um, and the way he sort of presented it was that not only can the, can the breathing combat it if you were to contract it, but... It, it's a preventative measure as well because it really strengthens your immune system. Now, I I do this every day, right? And you do this every day. You know the effects. You know how it makes you feel. There is absolutely a physical effect that occurs from this. It's not, you know, black magic. It's very hard to see what's happening under the hood from a chemical standpoint. Um, and in some ways, it's like, really? Like, something is as simple as this type of breathing every day can fight off something that is this powerful and scary and having this much effect on the world. Like it's almost hard to believe, but I guess my point is like, I want to believe that more than anything in the world because it's a preventative measure that we all can take right now, you know, mm -hmm. and we can, we should talk about the cold showers next. Um, but that, that's another aspect to it. But yeah, Justin, go ahead. Uh, I, just I just want to want make, make sure, sure that we put the disclaimer, disclaimer out there again, again that, you know, you know please, please do not take what we're saying as, as sound medical advice. advice. Yes. Uh, but, but we, but we, we do think, think that these, these routines could be very beneficial for everyone currently. Um, I actually just pulled up a, a note card that I had, uh, on E. coli, which is a foodborne infection. Um, and, and in looking at it, that like the signs would include bloody diarrhea and severe cramping. Uh, I'm trying to think what mechanism it would be in, in what, it, what it would be affecting. You know, and I think for when he was able to, oh, I was just thinking about it, he was able to simulate his, um, someone help me out, uh, his adrenaline 
right? I think it's what he's referenced, and I think in watching some of the documentaries and pieces on this, uh, he was able to stimulate so much adrenaline, and it might be something else that he was able to kind of ward off, and they showed medically that, that he was able to fight it without uh, anything else being put into his body, an antibiotic or something else. Um, I think it's, yeah. Uh, just to quickly add uh, that it wasn't just him that has been able to do this, but right. in the studies that they've done on him, uh, it's shown the same results with his students after one week of doing this training. It's fun. We actually we we talked about that last week. It, this is becoming like the the chocolate croissant slash Wim Hof uh, podcast experience. Um, the interesting thing, though, is is the, the Wim Hof method in, in his holotropic breathing and his meditation. Everything is so centered around breathing that it's, it would be interesting. It'd be really fascinating to see if if this actually. Uh, came to fruition that Wim was injected with COVID-19, right, this strain um, of the coronavirus, because it, it affects, or, or for most, it manifests as this infection of the respiratory system, right? So, you know, how, how would, sorry about that, how would one fare uh, using these methods and protocols of trying to do this sound breath work? while potentially having these, this, this pneumonia and, and, you know, just all of this uh, clutter, you know, feeling up in your well, lungs while you're going to take the deep breaths. And the other night, to be fair, uh, we, we, uh, we did pull up the, uh, we pulled up the, I think the first, uh, maybe intro to the Wim Hof Method. And my, my first intro was actually when Wim was on Joe Rogan. He just talked about this inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And I remember one of the first things he, he said was, like, don't do this in your car. Don't do this uh, in a place where you could potentially pass out. And I remember I was sitting in my car. I was in park. You know, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> And I remember doing, you know, this big, deep, diaphragmatic breath. And, and just so everyone is aware, if, if you do follow this protocol and trying to do these 30, 40 breaths, really try to take it down to the belly. Don't just shallow breathe up into, like, the top part of your chest where you're just kind of pulling up. You want to really take it down into your belly and have your belly push out, which can be a very uncomfortable feeling for a lot of people because I think a lot of times we try to kind of hold ourselves together so we're not presenting with this distended belly, right? But but that's part of the breathing is really getting it down into the gut and then having that exhale. Um, and, and I started, so when I did it initially in the car, I got really lightheaded because I think I was doing these, uh, I was following what Joe and and when we're doing it, it was really fast. And what I realized the other night was that it's much more slow and controlled. And 30, 40 breaths actually takes a good amount of time. And getting all of that, uh, and, and I was doing it where I was taking the breath in, and my understanding was to, was to really exhale and get a good amount out as well. And so for that, when, when I was becoming in that hypoxic state, less oxygen in the blood, less oxygen, less oxygen, uh, less oxygen in the body, I think that's where a lot of those tingling sensations come from. And I was getting it a lot in my, my feet and in my hands. I wasn't, I wasn't getting, I didn't start to clam up in the second round um, or tense up, but I, and I, but I was being really mindful of trying to be uh, as still and relaxed as possible because I know myself in other forms of yoga or meditation, Tai Chi, things I've done in the past when I've actually gotten the best out of it was when I was able to really just let go. Well, and just to comment briefly, I, I think it's important. I think now you had that experience from the Rogan show. And I, I remember that particular episode. It's a lot different than when right. you actually get into the protocol because it's not about pushing air out uh, as you're doing the breathing. It's very important to bring it in and then let it go, but not fully out. Because the whole point of while you're breathing is to oxygenate. And then when you do the final exhale, that's the point of getting into that hypoxic state. But it's not throughout the whole process. And that's, that's important to note because um, what, I, what I like about this style of breathing is that you get – the benefits of both sides you get the benefits of oxygenating um but then you also get the benefits of of lack of oxygen all in one setting um through this method so it's really i don't know it, it's it's been interesting and, and just to clarify one other thing too you mentioned the like the irony of this method of breathing and a disease that affects the lungs you know one of the points that he did make was this would work early on 
um, right, right. In, in the infection uh, process. Sure. Obviously, it would be a lot harder to do at a much later state. Um, but if you look at a controlled study like that, he would literally see the injection happening and then would begin, you know, the breathing method for how right. many days it would take her. But, but I guess my point is this, um, with that, and, and it's a practice that I foresee myself doing every day as much as I can for the rest of my life, whether this disease exists or not at this point, because of how good it makes me feel. And because I do, I truly believe there are absolute benefits to it mentally and physically, um, to do this. And it doesn't take overall that much time. I mean, I can do a full four or five rounds in 30 to 40 minutes of my day and feel absolutely amazing and feel like I've actually purified my body for, for that day. You know, um, John, I don't know how you feel, you know, yeah, it, but yeah, yeah if, if, if you're, you're the, the type, type of person, person which, which I used, used to be when the, all this shit started going down, where the first thing you would do is stare at your phone and read the news for 30 minutes to an hour every morning, I would highly recommend you to replace that with these breathing exercises. It'll set your day up for, it'll just make you feel better all day, you know. Um, yeah, that that's not helpful is uh, to... You know, especially, especially first, first thing in the morning, morning is to, you know, look, look for, for ways, ways to bring yourself down because that'll, that'll just affect you throughout the rest of the day. Of the day. Um, yeah. But I have found since I started doing these breathing exercises, I first uh, started doing them maybe like two years ago. I've been off and on with it, uh, mostly because of touring and stuff. But Man, I, after, after the, the first, first week or two of doing it, it I just remember, remember like, it kind of just hit me in the middle of the day, like, how much better I felt, you know? Um, almost like, it felt like all my problems were gone. Like, I just felt like, this is it, this is the key. Like, just breathing, you know? Uh, and, and it's not Wim Hof's method. It's, 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 it's not like, this is the way. Uh, it's any kind of breathing, you know? Like, we need to be doing breath work. Um, I think that in our society, we really neglect the breath, you know? Um, I never was taught about how to breathe growing up, you know, or how to take care of it, but breathing is number one, you know? Like, it's, uh, it comes before food and water, you know, cleanliness, hygiene, like, the first thing that keeps us alive is the breath, and, we need to nurture that and take care of it. Yeah, I agree. I want to take yeah. that, and I, I, I love that you have said that so succinctly, Jeff, so, so thank you. Um, you know, I, I sound like a broken record in that, you know, the quality of our breath determines the quality of our state in that moment. I've said that, I've said that many times uh, on this podcast as well. Uh, but it's, it, you're right, it is the most simple, it's the most essential um, the function of, of the living being, including us as human beings. And I, I think it's the simple things are so easy to not only overlook, but to not appreciate. Look, it seems so obvious that we could just go out and eat at a restaurant. Hopefully we now really appreciate the preciousness of that, that it's been taken away from us um, momentarily in, in our lives. Uh, the breath is where it's at. Uh, for thousands and thousands of years, the breath has been used as uh, for the healing potential that, that it, it has within. Um, and this isn't me uh, about to talk shit on just Western medicine, but this is me uh, asking people to, uh, to really consider uh, the, the sole purpose of just Western medicine. Um, there is a reason why energy work has existed for millennia, whether that's uh, Reiki or acupuncture or, or any type of uh, you know, breathing practice where you're really focused on, you know, whether it's the, the, the chakras uh, or just energy work in general. Um, the breath, food, right? E eating food, uh, drinking clean water, 
uh, having, having healthy, healthy relationships, relationships with, with ourselves and other people. people. I mean, and these are the fundamentals of health. And I think many of us in this culture uh, wait until there's some illness and rely on uh, the Western doctor to uh, whether prescribe the, the chemical medication uh, or, or the, the, the modality of healing, whatever it may be. Um, look, I, I've experienced this in, in the past couple weeks as well. Uh, I, I mentioned, I think, two episodes ago that out of nowhere, seemingly, there was this, like, fucking thing on my ass that was, like, deep, like a bruise, and I didn't know what it was. One of the theories I have now that it's gone away is that that had something to do uh, with, uh, with my lack of uh, security and stability, the sense of that. And, and I've, I've done, done a lot of energy work uh, down, down in that root chakra, and it has helped a lot. The thing has gone away, but I was getting this like buzzing sensation feeling uh, down, down by the, the, the tailbone for days, and it was deeply uncomfortable. And I did hours of this work to really try to get that energy to just fucking move and to not be stuck anymore. And as that shifted, I started becoming like lifted out of depression and intense uh, chronic anxiety. And who knows? That's a theory, but uh, it's something I tried and I found relief in it. Uh, my hope in sharing some of this is that we become a bit more open minded uh, as to ways that we can help ourselves, uh, ways that we can uh, avoid, but also to uh, move through moments of disease within our bodies and within our minds. And often, the most simple things, considering the breath, uh, considering physical movement to, to move our energy so we're not stuck, uh, where energy doesn't become stagnant within our bodies, uh, whether that's dancing uh, or uh, talking and, and more of like the mental stuff that gets stuck, getting it out, speaking it. Uh, I know when I when I was feeling very very fucking anxious, uh, to just share it with a friend was so healing, and I felt so much lighter by just speaking it. Um, there's so much we can do, but un un unfortunately, in, in the culture that most of us have been raised, uh, these aren't uh, just common things that are introduced to us in formal education or around the dinner table. Yeah. Um. I, uh, I, just I just wanted, wanted to, to highlight, highlight that uh, in, in a time where a lot of the input is very negative, I, there was there's a couple, there's two things I wanted to talk about. I actually heard twice today about a local hospital in the Baltimore area uh, talk about the, the first patient who was on a mechanical ventilator in the ICU who has now been discharged. And that felt like this just rally cry. That was the, the first glimmer of hope, uh, at least I've heard in the area. It, it wasn't something that was negative. It wasn't fearful. It wasn't fear-driven. It had nothing of that. It had all of the tone of, we're, we're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. You know, have some hope. And I think what's really powerful about this conversation uh, and the breath work that we're talking about is that the, the breath potentially, to Wim's point of, of what Matt, you were alluding to in the podcast that Jordan shared uh, with Russell Brand, actually gives us something that we can latch on to that feels like this could be a protective barrier. And yeah, look, maybe people do get it. They're asymptomatic before they become symptomatic. But this is something that, that you can start now. And, 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 and not, not saying that this is like medical advice, advice to go do this because this will protect you from it, but it's something that moves you in the right direction for protecting yourself. yourself. When, when all we're hearing is this input of negativity of where you, you feel very hopeless, hopeless right? right? You, you feel, feel helpless, helpless and hopeless. hopeless. There, there hasn't been, been a lot of people giving actionable advice on things that you can do to protect yourself, aside from, you know, the normal thing you sleep. And eating and, and everything else. These feel, you know, like the, the breath actually feels like something. Uh, and someone who is such an expert in it is saying that this could have a profound effect. The others potentially may, you know, may not. You may not uh, fare as well with just doing the kind of basics. This might be one level above. And I think it's really important for people to start flipping the script a little bit and having a conversation that's a little more hopeful. And, and I, I, I think, think, you know, I think, I think 
Jeff talked, talked about this, this Jordan's been talking about this, Matt's been talking about this, this input overload, and, and especially if it's negative, negative and it's just that broken record of negativity, that drives the fear, the anxiety. It's, it's really hard to get out of your own way uh, and be the observer when you just keep hammering yourself with all this stuff. So it's, you know, I think for anyone who's still struggling, anyone who's in that downward spiral and feels like they're not going to come back from it, it's, it's time, time to start, start digging out the other way and listening to things, things that bring hope and positivity because we need it now more than ever. ever. You know, this, this morning when I heard the, the what, what, what I would to me sounded like, like a rally cry, cry from this doctor. doctor. Uh, I, thought I thought about, about like uh, the, the moments, moments after 9-11 and people, when, people when, you, when you found people that were still alive and still kicking and still breathing and trying to get out from the rubble and everyone just banded together and were able to really start making a difference. Like, like, yeah, yeah we, we might, might be at a low, but, but maybe it's time that we, we start trying to pull ourselves back the other way and have a little bit more hope in this situation that there, there will be an end point to all of this and, and, and there will be more survivors. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to say, Matt, there was actually a book that you recommended to me a couple of years ago. I think it's called Deep Survival. Do you remember that? Do you remember recommending Um, It was the... Uh, the survive uh, yeah i mean i I don't, I don't think it was called that but it was like um the survivor book is what it was i think it was what it was called where it's like a series of t- accounts and, and stories of people surviving different things or or was it was it the one that the guy wrote who was out um hang on let me let me yeah look. i have, I have it, it somewhere in here but there's, there's so, so many, many books, books in here i probably wouldn't, wouldn't find, find it soon, soon. But, but anyway yeah go for it well, it kind of is talking about what Justin's talking about, the importance of hope in yeah. times like this. Like, the one of the most common thing that people, uh, common trait that people share, like survivors in really trying times, like, much more trying in, than this situation, like, way more trying, you know? Like, people stuck out in the wilderness, you know, buried in an avalanche, you know? things like like that is that they they hold on to hope um it's what keeps us going it's what keeps us present uh and informed and it keeps us uh you know taking care of what we need to take care of in the present moment in order to ensure that we'll all be okay um and we shouldn't underestimate uh the the um how much the media is invested in keeping us all in fear you know i'm not trying to say that uh there's nothing to be scared of but we also need to remember that the media is in the business of fear we've known this for so long way before this even happened so why should we believe that it's changed you know uh the media is having a field day with this you know they want people to be scared they want people to keep tuning back in Go ahead, Matt. No, no, no. I mean, fi- pl- please finish. Uh, I just yeah. want to comment after you're done. Yeah. So you know, um, it's important that we keep that we all keep that in mind. You know, if if you're the type of person that is just scrolling through the news, just desperately seeking answers, like, are we going to be okay or not? You know, you're really looking in the wrong place. You should be looking at what the experts are saying. You know, yeah. uh, the, the experts, experts are being quoted, quoted in the news, but all those quotes, quotes are being cherry picked, you know? Um, so, so, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, we, we could share, share Ollie, you're talking about adding in the notes somewhere, somewhere after this, this maybe, maybe a list of reliable sources that people, people should check out, out, you know, rather, rather than, than just scrolling, scrolling through CNN or NBC or, NBC or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my my comment was just going to be, um, you know, our our Maryland state governor, um, I think has handled things pretty well, and you know we're all at, at a stay at home thing, and um, that's I think it's a very important directive right now, um, and I'm really glad that I think most people, from what I see and and what I hear, are taking it seriously. But I did notice that even with all of these directives, and even with you know. Um, 
I think the 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 relative success of of our region and our area. I've noticed that there's a lot of wording and sort of rhetoric that our governor is even using to sort of strike fear into people. And I don't think it's the same kind of fear that the media is is trying to sort of put out there. I I think or at least my my hope is that it's not fully like it's not bullshit. I mean, there's a it definitely should be careful. Um, but I wonder if part of his language is to sort of put the fear of God into people to, for, to, to push them more to stay the fuck home. I think, I think so. so. Yeah, me too. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think a lot of his, uh, his rhetoric changed when there was a park and there was uh, a uh, either either like a, a little girl or a little boy who got infected and it sounded like it really took a turn uh, in the way that he was presenting this information of like there should be uh, there should be a little bit of fear in this because you don't want to get this and if you are non-essential you need to stay home right now someone made a point and it's like it's such a point of point and it's and it's you know it's comical at the same time of this is like the one time in existence that staying home and doing nothing is the way to save the world i mean it's so ridiculous to think about but it's as simple as that and it's not like you know and, and i think we need to reframe staying at home is not this like boring just dragged out thing it's it's just stay home and and be grateful you're home and maybe you're with loved ones or family members and you have time to work on that project that you've been putting off for months or i mean you know just start shifting the the thoughts and i think for our governor it just became this thing where he drove by the or they there were reports of going by that park where where this uh where this either you know young female or male was was just infected and there's all these people out just frolicking around as if the stay-at-home order and, and being out of school right now is like summer vacation or spring break. And that's not what we're saying. So then I think then it became, you know, he had to be a little more exclamative and, and a little more demonstrative in the speeches that he was giving every day. These briefings had to just be a little bit more fearful and be a little bit more serious, maybe in nature and in tone, because people just weren't taking it serious. I mean, we saw all those reports of people uh, at the beach and all these other things. and like, yeah, like, whatever. If I get it, I get it. Who cares? You know? Rona 20, you know, I'm still going to go out and have a great time. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, and that was in other areas. That was not here. But, yeah. you know, nonetheless, uh, that's what was going down. So I think it, th there's a, there's a normal sense of fear, I think, that can be put into these uh, briefings. You know, not, not where it's like hyperbolic or, or cherry picking and sensational like the media would like to make it out to be. Well, it was interesting. Like today, I don't know if you, so, that's honestly where I'm getting my news is just from like the governor's briefings because I really am trying to just act locally because that yep. is what's going to make a difference on a grander scale. Um, and <laughs> today, you know, his, his language was, um, you know, everybody's doing a good job. However, everybody can still, you know, can, needs to continue this and, and stick with this. And we're all in this together and don't be like this person. And he actually like named two different people's names. Don't be like this person who is a pastor of a church who's still holding, um, oh, right. you know, j sessions. And don't be like mm -hmm. this guy who got arrested for having a 60 person bonfire. Because if you're being like Twice. these people, Twice. yeah, right. Because if you're like these people, you're endangering, endangering the lives of the other citizens. And and then the language changes to, and we're still at the very beginning. It's only going to get worse before it gets better. We're predicting that this, you know, our state and our region could be as bad as New York in the coming week or two. Um, and, you know, when, I guess what's frustrating on some level about that is that you want to like I understand it again his point is well taken and it gets across that like hey stay the fuck home because it's not you know you need to be af afraid that it's going to get worse if you don't stay the fuck home at the same time it would be really nice to have some hope in there um, of like just so you guys know that while you're staying home our hospitals are not overloaded right now and you know a lot of people have recovered and 
you know, th- whatever the positive spin to it, it would be really great. I just, I guess if I'm thinking about it politically, if I were him, my message would be as dark as fucking possible to strike fear into every single Marylander to stay the fuck home so that we can get out of this as soon as possible. Right. So I, I, I get the rationale, but it also would just be like so nice to see some positivity with it at the same time. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. I, I think, think he should, should do uh, just, uh, just he should, should lead, lead some, some guided, guided breath work at, at the end. end. By the beginning. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, so you yeah. imagine Larry Hogan's up there just like, okay, and now we're going to take it in for four and out for seven. Yeah. Well, oh, that would be so great. Yeah. But it, it, was, least, it would be it awesome. Be, and to Matt's point, it would be something. But I think when you think about it, you you can, you know, it's you have to be brave about it because there are still. There are still people that are not getting it. Oh, this is whatever. It's not a big deal. If I get it, it's a big deal. Yeah, but if the the hospitals uh, become overcrowded and we run out of vents, now we've got a problem. Then you start to run into supposedly what Italy was dealing with, right, of you decide. You have to make these decisions of who lives and who dies. And I think if, if you're the leader of this small place in the world, right, this state, it's, it's, I, don't I don't think it's time, time for, uh, you, know, you know, fucking, fucking around. around. I think it's, it's time that you just, you lay it down and you tell people, this is how grave it is. Mm-hmm. And just, you, you need to count your blessings right now that you're healthy. You're, you're breathing, breathing on your own. own. You're in your own house. You're, you're protected. protected. If, if you, you don't need to leave, leave, don't leave. leave. And if, if you're, you're going to leave, take some precautions. I know I've heard enough people and I went to... The grocery, grocery store, store earlier, plenty, plenty of people, people that there's, there's no masks, masks, people aren't wearing gloves. gloves. I, I do see that some of the grocery stores are stepping up uh, from a hygiene standpoint, and, and I saw like at Mom's Organic today, one side had these are the uh, dirty um, carts, these are the ones that have been disinfected. That's a great start. I was at Trader Joe's last week, and it was, you wait in line. It was this many people can come in, you know, but it was one in, one out, or one out, one in kind of deal. And when you got to go in, here is your sanitation cloth to, to wipe down your cart, and they ask you, which, what are you taking? And if you weren't taking one, then they give you one because they need to spare them. But you got, a, you got a, a wipe so you can wipe your stuff down, and then you got a squirt of, of some kind of Purell, and you got the hand sanitizer, and you got to go in. So at least... You know, people, people are, are trying, trying their, their best, best to protect each other in that sense, but I, you know, to, to see people are still out and, and not taking maybe just basic precautions, even if they just like tied a handkerchief and, and yeah. found some gloves to throw. I don't know. It's it's still very crazy. So this morning, uh, or uh, let me go back. Last night, Natalie and I were realizing that we needed some things in the house, um, mainly like cleaning supplies. So we looked online at some different target locations near us to see what they had in stock. And there was one, uh, a little bit, you know, like 15 minutes down the road that, that had the things we needed. So we planned to wake up early today and get there for opening at eight o'clock. Um, and what was interesting was when we got there, I mean, there was, we got there like five minutes before eight, there may be like four cars. By the time it opened, there was like 12 cars. And by the time we went in, people started really getting there. But We went in, we both have gloves on, we both have our masks on, I'm wearing my sunglasses as well to protect my (laughs) eyes. Um, It's like, you know, it's like, like, yeah, kind of. And, and so there's two things I noticed. One, um, you know, I, I was, we were both very cautious and pretty much everybody else that went in with us was also very cautious. There was maybe one or two people that like, didn't really seem like they were taking it seriously. Um, but the staff that worked there were pretty much all young in their early 20s. And they, I mean, I don't know what they were doing in terms of washing their hands or in terms of, you know, sanitizing, but they literally didn't give a fuck from what it looked like. <laughs> they were just like stocking the shelves and like, yeah, I know you're all fucking covered up. So we don't have to be because everybody coming in here is a freak. It's like kind of how it felt, but I, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. I'm protecting myself. I get why you might be desensitized to it now, and it's probably more of an inconvenience for you than anything, but you know, just because you think I don't I mean I don't know, I don't want to go down that road. But on the other side, when we got to the checkout, we did the self-checkout, 
there was an older woman working there, probably in her like fifties, you know, older than the kids is, is what I'm referencing. Um, and anytime someone would finish at the at the checkout station, she would come over and wipe it down with Clorox wipes. Every little aspect of it, um, she would spray it down, wipe it, and then she'd call you over to check out and then she would have to look in your cart. Um, we had uh, two things of, of, uh, of um, hand soap and she was like, sorry, you can only have one. You know, mm. and it, it was, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. You know, it sucks because we definitely need, with, with four people here, we need more than one to last us. But at the same time, I get it. People are still uh, hoarding. They have that mentality. Um, but anyway, it was just, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated it to be in terms of like the fear, like going and being there. And I think part of that was because I really protected myself and so did my wife. We were really careful in every aspect of it. Um, and I'm okay to go do that again, for sure. But I don't want to do it every fucking day. And mm-hmm. you bet your ass, like... I have no intention of going out. And that's one of the things that like, you know, we're going to have a a meeting, the four of us here in the household to talk about like, what should the protocol be for certain aspects of this? Like when we need to go shopping, you don't just go out willy nilly, like it's a normal day and a normal time to go get one thing at the store. Like you can hold off on that shit, you know, make Mm -hmm. a list. You go once every couple weeks, call it a day. You know, you don't, it, this is not the kind of situation where it's just like, oh, I feel like going to get this. No, stay the fuck home. You know, so like I, I'm going to have that conversation probably tonight, I would imagine, or tomorrow now that they're back and we're going to get reacclimated to things. But um, I don't know. It's, it's just a crazy fucking time. That being said, one other thing I want to mention is the cold shower stuff. Jeff, have you noticed that like for, like, for me um, – if I have a headache or if I don't feel well, if I get in a cold shower, gone. Like, headache immediately, see you later. Like, no yeah. issues anymore. Um, it's It's been amazing, actually. Like, I look forward to it now. Um, and I started, I just sort of transitioned from uh, – to like what I was doing. You know, so when you first start with the cold showers, you, you do like – take a hot shower and then at the end see if you can do 30 seconds of cold before you end your shower and then you do uh you you graduate from that to like starting your shower cold for 30 seconds then getting warm then doing it again and getting warm and then ending that way right go ahead justin go back i I just just want to break it down down first and 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 maybe maybe this can be a thing thing and we can kind of post this within within the show show notes notes, uh whatever whatever we're going to give on facebook well i think this would be a thing the one thing i would say is this is where like it's this is where everyone could try the same thing. thing. Whatever you know, we want to come up with as a team. I'm hesitant to do that. If people want to seek this information out, they should. Um, but we shouldn't be posting about it because there are a little. There, there's probably a little bit more risk with this because it, it can shock your system. And I, I don't. I don't want to encourage people to do this until they do their own research on whether it's right for them. Um, but my my point is that I've gotten really accustomed to it to now where for the past week. I roll out of bed warm and, and comfortable and like the last thing I want to do is fucking get in the shower uh, or yeah. it's freezing cold. But I force myself to just get in a cold shower and it's not the pur- not even for the purpose of cleaning. I, I do my cleaning shower later in the day. But I force myself in for two to three minutes in the morning straight up as cold as it can be and it sucks for the first 20, 30 seconds – and then mm-hmm. it's like empowering and you physically feel great. Um, oh, yeah. It, it, to where you look forward to it. To where, so now in the afternoons, I'll do my workout. I'll sit in my little sauna that I got back behind me. And then after well, my sauna, chair, I go and I do my, my shower therapy, as I call it now, which is like the cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And it just feels very complete. And, you know, it's funny. Like I was – I was like literally dancing in the shower in the cold at the end because you just feel so, uh, I don't know what the word is, but like refreshed, I guess, revitalized. I don't know, it, it, but it, it really yeah. makes you feel good physically and mentally. It's, it's pretty <clears throat> pretty amazing. It really, it really feels, feels like, like to me, me like, like 
like, like afterwards. <laughs> like, I don't drink coffee anymore, but, like, man, this cold shower, like, it feels like a really efficient and all-day-lasting cup of really strong coffee, you know? Like, not like jittery, but more just, like, um, I'm just full of energy and I'm hyper-focused throughout the day. Um, like, I don't know if you share those same experiences, but... It's, it's just like, like as, as soon as, as I, I get, get out, out of the cold shower, shower I just, I'm just i ready, ready to, to tackle, tackle the day, day you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's, and it, doing it in the morning and then doing it in the afternoon is sort of, uh, I mean, it, it's really cool. It's like I get my charge and I wake up and then I do a lot of stuff throughout the day and then in the evening I take my shower that incorporates cold and it sort of sets me up nicely for my evening, you know? Um, I'm yeah. interested to see because I am doing the 10 week course. I'm interested to see where this goes. I have a feeling it's going to start incorporating ice baths, um, a lot more intense cold exposure than just necessarily, you know, just a cold shower. Um, but I definitely am ready to, to do those things and to try those things because I know it feels really good uh, once you commit to it. And that is the other thing. It's like, Whereas I used to wake up in the morning and be scrolling through my phone looking at all sorts of shit. Um, now when I wake up, I lay there for five, ten minutes and I start preparing myself for this cold plunge that I'm about to take. Um, and then once I get through that, it's like that same feeling of accomplishment, at, like uh, accomplishment of making your bed in the morning. It's like you give yourself this challenge right away that's really hard. But then once you do it, it's like, fuck, all right, I did that. What else can I fucking tackle? And right yeah. now, that's that that could be that that hope or that inspiration or positive um, motivation that people need in their days. So again, uh, and, and Justin, I, I like your point of getting everybody involved in this. Um, I hope everybody does. I just want to make sure that um, they go through the same disclaimers that I went through and Jeff went through. Um, as you even said before, we're not medical doctors. We can't prescribe this shit, nor should we be. It's just suggestions. Um, but but if this does sound interesting to you as a listener and you've never been exposed to it before, there's a ton of free information out there that you can look into in order to get more educated on your own before you decide to take the plunge, no pun intended. You know? Yeah, Wim Hof actually has a ton of free videos of how to do this technique, you know. Uh, that's probably the best way to get started into it. You could, you know, look at all the science and weigh it all out, read about it, and decide if it's for you or not. Uh, but what I recommend, and what Wim Hof recommends, is don't worry about the science, don't worry about you know, all the chemical reactions going on, just do it, just breathe like he's telling you to breathe, try it, and then you'll feel it, uh, and then go from there. And that's kind of how it started for me. Um, I just tried it out one day, uh, I felt really good, and then I ended up getting his, well, it's not his book, someone else wrote um, the book about him. It's called What Doesn't Kill Us. Uh, it's really good. It talks about the science. It talks about the routine, how to do it properly, um, disclaimers, what doctors say about it. Uh, there's a lot of science in there. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's really good. And, and the 10-week course as well, uh, that's also a great way to get started on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm now into the third week. Um and I'm, I'm just, I'm fully engulfed. I really am. Um, it's helping me a shit ton. I just have to continue to focus on what we were talking about before, which is, you know, being the observer. And I, I am finding myself getting better at that. You know, I had a little bit of downtime right before we did this episode. Um, kind of as the whole Dunkin' Donuts thing occurred, I was like, I found myself on my phone and I was on Facebook and I was scrolling and I caught myself. I was like, wait a minute, you're literally doing what you should not be doing and what you've told yourself you're not going to do. Stop. And I did. I just, I stopped and I put it away and I, I asked myself, how did that feel doing it? 
Like, how did I feel? And did I have those same shitty feelings that I was trying to avoid? And the answer was yes, I did. So again, avoid it, but work on being the observer of your mind and of your actions and what you're doing every day and check in with yourself in the moment and say, is this productive? Is this good for me? And if it is, awesome. If it's not, then definitely redirect. And that's what I, I'm saying that not as a directive for anybody on this call or, or people listening. I'm saying it as a sort of reinforcement for myself because I need to continue to be checking myself for those things throughout the day. And Matt, when, when you, you do, do that, that, my hope for you is that you're, you're very kind to yourself. yourself. That Definitely. you don't criticize, criticize yourself, yourself or beat yourself up for noticing things that you don't like or just noticing things that uh, you, you don't, don't find to be helpful. Uh, that, that kind of friction does not help. help. Uh, just, just, uh, and, and for you and for anyone, anyone else, uh, developing this sense of self-awareness, uh, just be curious, notice, notice what's, what's happening. happening. Uh, uh, there's, there's no, no need, need to necessarily, necessarily do anything about, about anything, anything that you notice. notice. There's no, no need to become attached or to judge it, uh, we're simply just becoming more aware and uh, the kinder we are to ourselves, uh, the more likely we'll be able to uh, make positive behavioral change uh, through grace and, and, and not through uh, force. I want to piggyback off of what Jordan was saying because I was thinking the same thing. I think it's, uh, look, everyone, you know, I think all of us can speak to it. Change is, it's really hard. Right, uh, and, and and so when, when you do do something, something positive towards a change you're trying to make, I don't think you have to physically reward yourself, although you could. And I think a lot of people's reward systems often for these things might go the wrong way. But you know, I think it's really important in those wins to take a second and just have a moment of reflection and and congratulate ourselves and have you know speak those really kind words to ourselves and those really empowering words because. Man, change, change is really hard, hard. And, I, and I remember, you know, the, the times growing up, if I was going through something that I was really trying to focus on, you know, these, these behaviors that I, that I know were uh, very negative, anytime you have one of those wins, it's to be celebrated. And I mean, and like, like no bullshit, like really celebrated. Like I, I stopped myself doing that thing that I always do, uh, and it leads me somewhere that I know I don't like. And it's, and man, changing is, you know, making those changes is just so hard. So when you, when you get a win like that, it's, it's to be celebrated over and over again until it eventually, you know, sticks. And, and I know these old habits die hard. So it's also to Jordan's point is just, you know, for anyone dealing with the same stuff is just being kind to yourself uh, as you're just kind of, you know, living and growing and going through these changes. One of the first podcasts I would listen to regularly was maybe 2005 or six. because this is back when you literally would like subscribe on iTunes and it would sync to your iPod. And I think it was called Motivation to Move. And it was like bite-sized, uh, just uh, this guy talking and, and giving you just encouragement for the day. And uh, he, it, it always stuck with me. He said, like, pat yourself on the back or like pat yourself on the ass. And at the time, like the 20 year old Jordan was thinking like, that is such a lame thing to do. And I don't think that just in my social circle, that was how we were oriented. And that stuck with me though. And I still do that. When I uh, accomplish something that was scary or hard, uh, I kind of, whether literally or figuratively, uh, I'll, I'll pat myself on the back. I'll give myself that credit. And that, it has been a game changer in the relationship I have developed with myself. Uh, you know, the relationship we have with ourselves, like that's the whole fucking game, people. Like that is uh, reflective in, in everything that we do externally. And the, the more self-compassion that we can cultivate, uh, we, we are far better off. I, I think self-awareness is finally becoming this buzz term, and thank God for it. But self-awareness without self-compassion or self-acceptance, uh, that could lead to just so much more distress that's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. It's really well said. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, 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 just to, to, to respond to that, that's one thing that I'm, I'm not doing. I'm not beating myself up by any means. Uh, I'm, I'm recognizing who I am. I know who I am. I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. And I'm using this opportunity to really figure out 
what tools are available and at my disposal to help strengthen my weaknesses um, and not punish myself for, for not being perfect, you know. I'm definitely getting way better and I'm going to continue to get better and hopefully anybody who is working on themselves or has figured out a new schedule or has added something new to their life during this time uh, can, you know, to your point, can be not only um, doing those new things but also giving yourself a chance to make them into a, a habit that becomes a really positive habit, you know, or a positive, uh, creating a positive outcome. For sure. Well, I, I mean, I, I got to say, I feel a lot better than I did, you know, an hour and a half ago before I got on this call uh, with you guys. And it always helps to talk. So that's another thing. Like, I know we're not in the same room, but finding people to communicate with directly, not just on fucking Facebook, is a very important thing. Um, because like you said, Jordan, getting it out can have such a, a, a massive positive effect on, on someone's mind and, and body for that matter, you know, and it's incredible, dude. I, like when I get in those really anxious moments, it's amazing how I physically am affected. Like I start f physically feeling sick, dizzy, ang like, like nauseated or like queasy or just overwhelmed with a headache. Like, and I know that it's not from anything other than my own mind making a uh, a web of shit, you know, that causes that. So it, it's just yeah. anyway, being able to untangle that web and talk about it is really helpful. For me, um, that the physical symptoms of anxiety would manifest in chest pains. Uh, and I know a lot of people out there are going through the same thing, especially right now. Uh, if you're experiencing chest pains, you know, it's a really common thing with anxiety. Um, yeah, I thought I was going to have a heart attack, you know. I went to the ER twice last year thinking that I was dying. But it was just, it was just all in my head, you know. I went to two doctors and a cardiologist. They all took, told me I was fine. Like, they're like, yo, I don't see anything in here. Like, you're healthy. Um, so they recommended I work on my anxiety. And uh, ever since I've been, and that, that is why I have taken this uh, Wim Hof stuff more seriously and meditation is to tackle my anxiety. Uh, because, you know, it's not just an annoyance in daily life. It's not just, um, like... Oh, it's, it's just, just like, like, you know, like, like a, a headache, headache or something. something. You know, it's, some, it's like a found... Yeah, it's debilitating. It's crippling. And it's a foundational part of our lives. If we don't tackle anxiety, then everything else just kind of falls apart. Yeah. Well said, man. I just wanted to quickly ask, uh, Jeff, you, you lived around the world, right? In many places. You've traveled a lot of different places. Uh, just, you know, kind of briefly, I just wanted to, I wanted to ask before we would hop off uh, this call, um, have you been in, in communication with a lot of the people around in different places uh, and uh, just trying to, like, gauge other people's experiences and kind of just being there to listen and, and hearing what it's like for others? Yeah, um, actually, I've been in pretty close contact with a group of my friends that I got down in Mexico because that's where I was uh, just a few weeks ago um, and they kind of they they kind of saw this thing at the tail end basically what we went through like three weeks ago that's what they're all going through right now you know they were kind of um, watching the world burn so to speak you know being like man I'm so glad we're down here in Cozumel on this island uh, um, like, it's crazy what's happening out there, but just the other day they started a lockdown and closed all the businesses, everyone has to stay at home, and so now they're all very worried. They're, they're kind of going through what we all went through uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, that kind of made me reflect on what I was going through or what we were going through a few weeks ago, like how different now feels compared to back then, um, you know, in a, in a way, like, you know, I feel a lot better, 
you know? Like, it's, it's getting, it's definitely, definitely getting, getting scary, scary out there, there but um, we're kind of coming face to face with how this is going to pan out more and more every day. You know, there's new data every day. Um, we're seeing developments in what they're doing with a vaccine or with different treatments. Um, and I think it's going to continue that way as time goes on. Like, you know, more and more people are going to get sick. But, as, but along with that, we're going to start seeing more and more about what we're going to do to tackle this thing, you know. So it's really important, I think, to hold on to that. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, thanks, Jeff. That's actually, uh, it's profound to say that, and I, I, it's profound to start thinking that way, and I really hope that we are getting every day closer and closer to that point of um, to that point where hopefully um, we get so good at doing this to some degree that what is happening in the in our outside world doesn't have to affect us as much because we have this routine that works we feel good in it um, we're being safe, we're being careful, we're not being affected by it, and I mean, Godspeed, that's the hope, right? That we all can really adapt to this. Um, right. And yeah, we are, we are adapting to it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. Um, last thing, hope. last thing, Justin, so I, I thought of you, um, not to bring up anything negative, but I thought of you this week when there was that uh, big outbreak at that uh, elder care facility in Mount Airy, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, long-term, long-term care, care facility. facility. Long-term care facility, which I, it, it is pretty similar to where what you're doing, right? Or the type of facility you're working at. Um, so we have, we have like, like people, people that have, have just like had a recent hospitalization. And they come potentially for a couple months, months, kind of like post-acute care. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, then we, we do, do have, have you know some, some of the long-term, long-term residents. residents. Yeah. So uh, similar. With, with Very that, similar. With that happening. Have you seen a difference in tone, mood, behavior, rules, anything like that at your facility? Has have they cracked down in any way or, or changed uh, anything? Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I mean, mean I, I think, think across, across the board, board I, think I think everyone has just been, been and, and I think this isn't just my facility, this is every facility and every hospital and, and uh, uh, you, know, you know, kind of in the area. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think, think people, people are just, just uh, they're, they're heightened and, and they're aware. Uh, which, which is a good thing. thing. It, it, it makes you, you know, kind of dot your I's and cross your T's and, and really make sure. I mean, I spent 10, 15 minutes today when I got in, you know, cleaning my desk and my window and the desk behind me and I was wiping the, you know, my computer down. I'm wiping my cell phone and I'm wiping my stapler and I'm, you know, I'm spraying my mouse and the, the phone that I'm going to use in case someone calls and the door handles. And I'm seeing, yeah, I mean, look, I think we're seeing, um, you know, custodians, custodians are going around and, and maintenance and everyone is, is cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And it's all just, you know, kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a normal, I think, response to what is going on that everyone is trying to just do their due diligence and keep everything super clean, you know, wash your hands. Everyone's got hand sanitizer at their desk and in their pocket. Everyone's got a small bottle and, you know, everyone's doing what needs to be done. And of course it's, um, it's, it's tough, tough because, because if you, you look, look at the, the, the case, case that you're, you're talking, talking about, about, I think it was supposedly like a an asymptomatic person who came in who then potentially was the one who then exposed others to it. And so I think, you know, look, everyone is trying to just do their best, not just my facility, but I think everyone in general, uh, to keep everyone safe, you know. And to the point of like with your, uh, um, you know, with Natalie's parents coming home, it's... You, you can, can only control, control so much, much and then we, we have, have to, to kind of remove, remove ourselves from the situation because if we don't remove ourselves, ourselves it's, it's just too easy to go down that, that you know that, that downward spiral of the thought process of oh but, but you know yeah, i can, can only account for myself, myself. But, but really that's, that's all you can do, do. So, so you know I, i've seen uh, a lot of people not just my facility but but everywhere uh just taking all these very necessary safety precautions to try to protect um ourselves and our loved ones, and, and our staff, and then everyone around you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. 
everyone's in this together. together. You know, yeah, I, think I think that's, that's the, we're in this together. together. When I, I, was I was sitting at work the other day and I was listening to a podcast that, that Jordan had shared, kind of in the just background, background noise. And, uh, and it was just, and I think this was um, Tony Robbins. And he was talking about uh, hope. And I think he maybe referenced also the serenity prayer, which we've referenced as well. But you know, I just kind of like wrote a note down of just hope, you know, and, and uh, being thankful and grateful for kind of, you know, our current health and you know, our family and our friends and everyone around us who, you know, thus far, I think for most of us and have been, you know, pretty good. And I think that's important to, to keep remembering right now, you know, and just, and just having that hope because it's, 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 it's what, what we can, can do. do. It's, it's what, what we can control, control right now. now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Knock on wood that everybody we know and love continues to stay, um, stay safe. Just right. be careful. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Uh, anybody listening? I'm losing all my light. light. Yeah, it's all good. I think, I think it's, it's a great time to wrap up. <laughs> um, any, anybody listening? Uh, if you want to get more involved in our community or involved in the conversations that we're having with our community. <laughs> Uh, rough, rough, rough. Um, you can uh, you can hop on Facebook and go to one of the good places on Facebook, which is uh, the Chocolate Croissants Forum, and it's uh, Facebook dot com slash groups slash Chocolate Croissants. I wanted to make sure that we mentioned that this episode. Um, Jeff, dude, thank you very much for uh, for being on. I know that I've always found um, calm. In talking to you, you're one of the people that I would go to during a time like this to get some perspective. So uh, it's part of the reason why I wanted to have you on because I think other people can also probably take something away from this. Um, And then, of course, Jordan and Justin, it's always good to talk to you guys about this stuff, um, especially when I'm, you know, when I'm freaking out. So like like many people are right now. (laughs) Yeah, I want to thank you guys for having me, and I think it's really cool like what you guys are doing with this podcast, you know, kind of bring everyone together, like, you know, even though we're all separated from each other, it doesn't mean that we all can't continue our collective thoughts and conversations, you know, and I think that this is what this podcast is all about. Hell yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks, yeah, man. Man. Yep. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Jordan. Yeah, man, I'm oh, grateful. sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Well, we're uh, gra- I'm just, just really grateful, grateful so, so thank you guys. guys. We're grateful to have you. Uh, please Let's say hi to uh, yeah, please, please say hi to Louise and Justin and Brian, um, and hopefully, you know, at some point we all can actually get together sometime, yeah. you know, sooner than later when we're all safe. Sometimes. Sometimes. 2022. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, do do it, let's do an ice plunge when this is all over. Oh, I'm so down. I was, you know, I was thinking about when we're on tour next, and like the showers <laughs> don't have any hot water anymore at the venues, like in in Europe. No problem. <laughs> let's do it. No problem. Yeah, no problem. Bring, bring it on. on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of excited for that moment to be like, oh, all right, yes, let's do this. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, Jordan, do you want to take us out here, bro? Yeah, yeah, I just, just want to say, say that, that I think this episode, episode in particular was monumental for me in particular because Justin revealed that he has a work stapler, um, and, and I find that oddly interesting. Um, I'd, I'd like to say, say that Justin as well gets the podcast, podcast award for vocabulary today. today. Um, Jeff gets the award for, for guest of the episode, and, and Matt for hoodie of the episode. Matt's hoodie game is fucking strong this evening. Life rips. Well done. <laughs> Shout, Shout out to, Shout out to Crystalia. Thank right? you for the great merch. Uh, if you're listening and, and you've been used to listening to this on a podcast app, uh, yo, Joe fucking Hamilton with the video, right? Yeah. Crushed it. Crushed yeah, so it. We have, we have a YouTube. I'd imagine if you search Chuck Croissant's podcast in YouTube, that might be one of the things that comes up. Um, so we uh, look. We're always grateful for your attention. Uh, we look forward to connecting with all of you in the in the Facebook group in uh, in the days uh, and, and in the week to come. We will see you again next week. And I will be so succinct in just saying that uh, until until then, just please, 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 uh, be easy on yourself. Be kind to yourself, and 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 demonstrate just so much love for yourself uh, because you deserve it. So. Until Until next time. time.
बाय बाय